a man named Craig Dawson. You've probably never heard of him before. He has a very unusual habit. He jogs, and that's not an unusual habit. A lot of people jog. But what's unusual about him is that when he jogs, he always has his head down. Now, it's not because he's concerned about losing his balance. It's not because he's concerned about his safety, he might fall or something like that. It's not because he's shy and he doesn't want to look up at anybody. <laughs> but he always looks down when he jogs. And the reason he does that is because he's always looking for spare change. And over the 25 years, at the time of this writing, over the 25 years that he uh, has been jogging, he has found over $8,000 in loose change. Over $8,000. Now the point is, Little things add up, <laughs> don't they? Now, we don't deal as much with change nowadays as we used to. But used to, I'd come home and there would be a little bit of change in my pocket and I would throw it in a jar and, uh, you know, maybe the next day I'd have a little change like that. And just over a period of time, I would put it in a jar and sooner or later you get those coins out put them in some wrappers, take it to the bank, and you find out you had a, a significant amount of money there just from that change. Little things add up. Little things are important. Little things are important. And dads, this message is particularly to you. It's to everybody, but especially for you today. I want to, and, and, and I say I want to, I want to because I feel like the Lord has told me to remind you that little things are important. Not just the big things that you do. You know, like uh, uh, being the provider for the family or the protector of the family. Even uh, in being the spiritual leader in your household. Those are, are big, important things, and they are important. But there are little things that are very, very important. And the little things that you do add up over time. Your family, your children may not remember every little thing you did, every little thing you said, every little example that you said. But over time, those little things add up just like making regular deposits in a bank account. If you put a little bit into a savings account, but you do it consistently and regularly over and over and over, Give it enough time and you'll have a significant amount of money in that account. Because those little things add up. And it works just like that, dads. But we do little things consistently with our children. Those little things go into their lives just like a bank account and are built up, built up. They add up and they have a significant influence on our kids. Even if they don't remember the exact this or that that you did. It's the fact that you did those little things and you did them consistently. I was working on a, um, a project at home recently and I needed a particular kind of drill bit. And I don't know if you're like me, but most of my, you know, over the years I've gotten little cases with drill bits in them and driver bits and stuff. And uh, most of mine, if you open them up, there'll be several missing. <laughs> I try to be good about putting them back in there, but for, for, a lot of, for a lot of cases, they just don't make it back. They get broken or they're lost or something. And so any case you open up, I can assure you there will be a few that are missing in there. Anybody relate to that, man? <laughs> you, got, you might can take all the ones you have, put them together, maybe come up with one complete set, maybe. Well... I was working on a project and I needed this particular drill bit, a certain size, a certain length, and I just couldn't seem to put my hands on one. I looked in all those boxes with the missing parts and I couldn't find one. I, I had a, a, a little drawer that had some bits in it. I went through all that stuff. I, I could not find what I needed. And then it occurred to me 
that my daddy, who uh, passed away years ago, uh, in his tools, I remember he had some, some drill bits. So I went and pulled out one of the cases that he had saved and passed down, opened it up, and when I did, I found the exact bit that I needed. And the reason that I found it so easily is because he had every one of them in there, the right size, none missing, in the right place. In the right place. <laughs> and i tell you what's the truth. I teared up. Because it occurred to me how thoughtful my daddy was. He didn't do that just for himself. He did it because he knew that one day somebody else would have that and they might be in a situation just like I was in and need that particular one and he took the time to put them back and make sure they were together and it was there for me when I needed it. So even beyond his lifetime on this earth, he made provision for me. And I'm so thankful that Daddy took care of the little things. Because little things are important. And I want to share with you today three little things that you can do, dads. You say, well, you know, dads, being a dad is a challenge. It's, it's, it's a huge responsibility. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And there are some big things that's, uh, that are required of us as dads. But I want to share three little things with you. Three little things that you can do today. That you can do right now. That you can do without any cost. These are simple, easy, anybody can do it. Little things. Three little things that you can do. That will make a huge difference in your family. With your children. Just three little things but they'll have a huge impact. And the first one is this, and I believe this is so relevant in the world in which we're living. Undivided attention. All of us are capable, dads, of doing that. But you know what? This world we live in has become so uh, technology-oriented my notes aren't on paper, they're on this little iPad. And we've become so oriented to technology that we got to have it all the time. we got it on our watch. So my kids have those little watches that have the phone built in and all that. It's like Dick Tracy. <laughs> oh, no, the young kids don't know what Dick Tracy is. But anyway, cell phones, we got them. We're on them all the time. <laughs> And sometimes when our kids come to us, and I'm not talking about just young kids today, I'm talking about adult kids. Sometimes when they come and they need to talk to us about something, we need to make sure on purpose we take that phone and lay it down and put it face down so we can't see if anything lights up on it. Just put it aside on purpose and give our undivided attention. Sometimes we need to turn off that TV and say, I'm, and, and position ourselves, body language, lean into them and say, I am giving you my undivided attention. What does that say? It says that I'm genuinely interested in you. I'm really wanting to know what is going on with you. I'm concerned about you. Anything that concerns you concerns me. I remember years ago when my kids were young, for a while, we had them in uh, in uh, Christian schools, and then we pulled them out, and we started uh, homeschooling. And that worked out great for my kids. It, it was a wonderful thing. My wife did a, a wonderful job with them, and they could learn at their own pace, and it was just great. Maybe it's not for everybody, but for us, it worked out really well. And one of the things that surprised me a little when we started to interact with other homeschool parents was that we'd be talking to them about something and if the child came up and needed mommy or daddy's attention, they would put us on hold. Excuse me, just 
I am. And give that child their undivided attention, and then they would go back to the adult conversation. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, back years ago, that was not the case. <laughs> you, you, don't, you just be quiet as a child until the adults are finished. But they gave their children their time, their undivided attention when they needed them. And that made such an impression on us because we realize that what it's telling that child is that what I have to say is important. Or if I need mommy or daddy, they're going to give me their attention they're, that they're important. Even the little things in your kids' lives. It may seem like once you find out what they want to talk to you about, this is young kids or adult kids, maybe they want to talk to you about something, and when you realize what it is, you're like, oh, that's a nothing. It may be a nothing to you, but it may be a huge something to them. Give them your undivided attention. That is a little thing, isn't it? It's a little thing. It's a little thing. And it wouldn't hurt to do that with other adults, would it? Amen. <laughs> you know, Amen. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Undivided attention. That's a good thing. It's a little thing. It's a simple thing. And dads, all of us can do it. So let's on purpose do that. Even with your adult kids. They call you on the phone or, or they're in your presence want to talk to you about something. Put aside all the distractions and give them undivided attention. Amen? Amen. 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 And then share your life with your kids. What do I mean by that? That's a little thing. And here's what I'm talking about. Don't try to keep everything from your children and don't talk about anything in front of them and keep, everything, keep them in the dark. Let them know about the things that happen in life. Let them know about the circumstances. Let them know about the challenges that come up in your life. All of us have them. Things come up. Things happen unexpected circumstances, and we need to share with our kids what's going on. Because when they reach adulthood, or if they are an adult now, they may encounter a similar circumstance. It's important that we include them in on that and share with them what's going on in their life because it gives us an opportunity to share our faith. They can see how we respond to that circumstance with us being a Christian, with us being someone who has a relationship with the Father. They can see how we respond. They need to know about it. And I would say, depending on the circumstance and what it is, I would say even the younger ones. If it's something that it's okay for them to hear and be a, be a part of, let them in on it. You're having trouble with something that are... Maybe there, there's a bill that's coming due and you're not quite sure what we're going to do about this. Let them see how you handle it. Show them, it, model for them what it's like to be a true believer in Christ. And let them see, you know what, we've got this coming up and I don't know how we're going to deal with this, but I'm trusting God in this. I know he's my father and he said he wouldn't leave me or forsake me. He would never fail and he's my provider. I have my trust in him. He's going to make a way for me somehow. Let them see that in you. Let them see your faith. Share your life with them. Adult kids too. Share your life. Because as you share your life, you share your faith. If you have faith, and I hope you do. <laughs> I hope you do. Share your faith. They need to see mom and dad putting their trust in God. Not going berserk over what are we going to do? Uh, do that. They need to see that you have trust in the Father. They need to see it modeled in front of them. Share your life. And do it on purpose. You may have, now those of you with adult kids, you may have to 
set up a regular kind of interaction with your adult kids to make that happen. We, uh, one thing that we do is my son, he comes over early, 7 o'clock on Monday mornings, and he has breakfast with us. And that's a regular thing that we do. And it gives us a chance to share our life with him and share what's going on with him with us so that we can interact about it and we can share our faith and encourage one another and rejoice when we see how God made a way where there didn't seem to be one. It's a great interaction, but we had to do it on purpose. We had to set up a schedule and say, let's do this. It didn't just happen. We had to make it happen. Interact with your kids. Share your life with them on purpose, on a regular basis. And when you share your life, you share your faith. Amen? Does that make sense? You share your life, you share your faith. These are just little things. Third one, let them hear you pray. Let them hear you pray. Our kids, little ones and adult kids, they need to hear us pray. They need to hear us pray. Why? Because you learn a lot about a person when you hear them pray. Yeah. You learn where their heart is, what their relationship with God really is, where their faith level is. You learn a lot about a person when you hear them pray. I'm proud of uh, some of our deaf adults over the years. I know uh, Rudy mentioned to me that when Carl was staying at his house just before he went home to be with the Lord, he stayed with Rudy for, for a little while. And Rudy said uh, that there were several times he walked into the room where Carl was to tell him something or give him something or whatever, and Carl would be in there praying. Of course, he was using sign language, but he was praying. And just seeing him do that ministered to Rudy. Even without knowing everything he had said, it ministered to him. I remember walking next door and, and uh, seeing Ozzy over there one day sitting out on his chair. And, and he was just making noise, and I was going to go quieting him down. <laughs> And when I got over there, the, the tears were flowing, and he was actually praying out there. He was just praying. He was making a lot of vocal noises when he prayed, but he was praying. Amen. That did something to me, to know that he had enough trust in the Lord that he was praying and talking to him. It was about a particular circumstance he was dealing with at that time. Amen. Little Jocelyn, right now, when she says a, the blessing for mealtime, she, she doesn't pray, uh, not there's anything wrong with the little memorized prayers, you know, uh, that kids often pray. We used to pray. But she doesn't pray that. She'll say, thank you, Lord, and here she goes. And she'll thank the Lord for everybody and everything and all. I mean, it's a long prayer. <laughs> and she will thank the Lord for the food in there, but she, she just prays a long prayer. And that ministers to us just hearing that. It ministers to us. It lets us know where her heart and mind is even now uh, as such a young child. She's already beginning to develop that relationship. It's an easy thing. A two-year-old can do it. Amen. You can do it. We can do it, dads. Let your children hear you pray. They need to hear. Yeah, they need they, to they, hear. It's a huge that body. Yes, it sets examples, what Tracy's saying. It sets example. If your kids see you do it, then they'll follow that example. But the, it makes an impact that I don't know that you could make any other way. And yet it's so simple. Just a little thing. Just a little thing. When your kids come to you and they're upset or they're dealing with something and they're, Dad, I don't know what to do about this. I, I, even adult children, adult children come back and talk to their parents. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. We, I talk to my mom about every day. 
we still communicate things. It's good for us to pray and let our kids hear us pray. In so many ways, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and yet it's a little thing. Just a little thing. Let your kids hear you pray. Luke 16, verse 10 says, If you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. If you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. So take care of the little things. And the big things will tend to take care of themselves. Dads, be consistent in the little things. The little things. You never know. Just my daddy, I don't know that he had a clue that that would impact me like it did one day. Just a little thing like that that he did. Keeping those drill bits together. Thinking that somewhere down the line somebody's going to need it. And there I was just a few days ago, and I realized it hit me that my blessing that day and being able to finish that job was a direct result of him doing the little things. And you and I can do the little things. Yes, we can. We can do it, and we need to do it. We need to make that influence uh, known to our children. We need to impact them for God, don't we? Moms and dads. We need to be that influence on our kids. We need to model for them. And I'll tell you, you'll accomplish a lot more by doing little things like this than always beating them over the head about what they didn't do or what they didn't do well, didn't do right. You'll accomplish a lot more in influencing your kids by doing those little things. So on this Father's Day, Let's, uh, I want you to uh, just repeat this with me. Kayla, you, you help our deaf to sign it. I want you to repeat these with me. The first one is undivided attention. Can you say that, everybody? Undivided attention. Undivided attention. Say it one more time. Undivided attention. The second one is share your life and faith. Share your life and faith. All right. And the third one is let them hear you pray. Let them hear you pray. We need to do that. All of us do, but dads, we're the spiritual head of household. We're the ones that God holds responsible for how our children are nurtured in the Lord. There's a, there's a heavy responsibility there, but we can do a great job of that sometimes just by doing the little things, but doing those consistently. So why the specific gift today? Well, each of those little tools on that Father's Day gift that I handed out, each one of them is important, depending on your situation. <laughs> you never know which one of them you're going to need, but each one of them, in the right circumstance, the right situation, any one of them could be really, really important to you at that time, right? Every little thing we do is important and it all adds up. Little things. Little things that we do. Like putting our hand on, on the head of our children. I used to do that with our kids when they were little. Just come put my hand on their head. I wasn't thinking blessing and, and necessarily, but it was kind of like that. And you know what? My kids got to the point that they would come take daddy's hand and put it on the head. <laughs> and now my grandkids are, are doing the same thing. Just little things. Little things. Little things that say I love you. Little things that say you're important to me. Little things that mean a lot in the long term. It's not always about how much money you bring home for the family or, you know, being the disciplinarian. <laughs> and by the way, that's one of those, let me just step out of the box here for a second. That's one of those that I've always regretted that it seems to be built into our system. 
this thing that daddy is a disciplinarian and mama, you, wait till your daddy gets home. <laughs> you know, it's all about daddy. Daddy's got to do the, the ah, I just don't like it. But anyway, I, I think it's a dual role for, for mom and dad. I think each, they, they should be in sync, in agreement, and both should be involved in that. But anyway, it's not always about those big things that we're responsible for. It's the little things. The little things. My grandbabies, I start to call them grandbabies. My oldest one's 10 years old. And every once in a while, see, I, ever since they were little, I, I, I just like to get them up. And I'm sitting in my chair, and they'll climb up there, and they'll just cuddle. And sometimes they... They do it under the guise of, you know, we're playing something, but they just, it's just an opportunity to snuggle a little bit and just, you know, because they remember all those times when they were real little and I had them like that. And every once in a while, my 10-year-old uh, grandson will still find a, a, a reason why he needs to climb up there and, and just be up there with granddaddy for a minute. Little things. Little things. And I'll tell you this, as long as he wants to climb up there, I'll let him. <laughs> <laughs> One day he'll be old enough, it'll just it'll be awkward, you know. But right now, <laughs> as long as he wants to climb up there, I don't care how lanky he gets, he can climb up there on Granada's lap. The little things that we do make an impact. Be consistent in the little things, Dad. You do that, and the big things will take care of themselves. Kids will overlook a lot of mistakes if they realize how much you love them. Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> love covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> love fixes a lot of problems. It heals a lot of hurts. You may not be the, the greatest breadwinner. Maybe, maybe you're not physically able to even be the breadwinner for your family. What's important is that your family knows how much you love them. And you know why that's so precious? Because that's exactly who our father is. He's love. And every time we show our kids love, we're just modeling for them what we receive from him. Amen? Amen. Amen? So today, let's also say Happy Father's Day to God. Let's thank him for all the little things he does by his spirit. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Romans 8, 28 where it talks about him working all things together for good. And he does that by the power of his spirit. And I just enjoy every day seeing all the little things that he does that I can see he's working that together. And he worked that out for me. And he's working this together over here. He's faithful in those little things as well as the big things. And I thank him for that. So I say happy Father's Day to you. And thank you for the little things. And I want to be a mirror image of him, don't you? Amen. I want to follow his example. And I want to be faithful and consistent in all the little things that I do. So that if my kids know anything, if they learn anything from me, and my grandkids, if they re remember or learn anything, for me, I want them to learn and remember what God is like. Because I don't know about you, some of you may not be aware of this, but God, God does those little touches. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but some of you, some of you do. But I'm talking about inside. There are times when things are going on that there's not a person on this planet that can do anything about it. But God is the one who spiritually will put his hand on your head, who spiritually 
will touch you inside and bring a healing to you that nobody else can bring. He'll bring a peace to you in the midst of all kinds of chaos going on in your life. He can do those little things by the power of his spirit. And I'm thankful for that today. So I say, Happy Father's Day, God. Does anybody, do you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Just little touches. Just little touches. I'm still here. I'm still here. I still got you. You okay? My power is going to show up now in your weakness. <laughs> The little things. Let's pray together. Father, you've been absolutely 100% faithful in all your dealings with us, and we are so grateful for that. Thank you for all the little things that you do. All the little ways that you bless us every day and touch our lives. Thank you for that. And our desire today, especially as dads, is we want to be consistent in those little things. We want to be consistent. We want to make sure that our, our kids receive our undivided attention. We want to make sure that we share our life and faith with them. So they can see how we deal with the circumstances that come up. And we want to pray in front of our kids. Let them hear us pray so that they'll know how much we love you and how much we trust you. And where our help comes from. Thank you, Father. On Father's Day, we just rejoice in you. Thank you for the little things and helping us to be consistent in those as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. For your journal today, it's maybe hard to see it on the screen, but what I've done is use the word dad, and instead of drawing it, the word dad is made up of little dots. Just little dots to make a letter. You understand what I'm saying? Little dots. The point is for you to remember, Dad, the little things. The little things. The little dots for little things.